All right. Welcome back. We're going to do now Proverbs 1 2, the word discern. Hopefully, this will be a one class lesson. Maybe it'll bleed over to two. Maybe it could be another three months. I don't know. And then we're off to one of my personal favorites in the Hebrew uh, the words of understanding. Um, that expression has been something that I've always been. I use it in my teachings, but I don't know if I'm right because now that we've opened up Ishlay, um, I really, I mean, I, I know what it means on a layman level, but I want to know what it really, really, really means, you know? So when we get to the words of understanding, that's like, that's going to be the, 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 here you go, Shlomo Melech over there, right, uh, Eric? That's our, our Malchus. That's going to be the, the vessel that receives the light of everything we said until now. So that's going to be a very exciting uh, thing when we get to the words of understanding. So be ready. All right, Brian, get ready. Here we go. Let's go to our big friend, Miriam Webster. Let's see what we find. Miriam, discern. Now, before we do discern, uh, Brian, you probably got your King James or whatever you call it, right? Is it? Is anybody, give me a one or two if you have a Tanakh open up right now. If you have a Tanakh, yeah. Tell me, everyone type in. If you have a Tanakh, type in what word it, your book uses. For example, our book says discern. All right, I want to know your words. So go ahead and type it in. Whatever copy you have, I want to know what it says. Go ahead. Where, where our word is to discern, I want to know what your version says. Because remember, the English is going to have different versions. Brian, go ahead and type it in. What you have? You see it, Lars? It's just say, you know, to know wisdom and instruction, blah, 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 to discern. See the words to discern? To discern? Yeah, yours is discernment, Brian? Yeah, Lars, chapter 1, verse 2, where the word, where our picture on the screen, where it says to discern, what does your book say? Your, your scripture, what does it say where ours says to discern? Yeah. So yours says, hold on. <laughs> Maybe Shlomo meant that. I don't know. <laughs> no. No. Uh, after that, and I'm talking about it in, in English, gentlemen. English, Anglit. I want to know what your English scripture says for the word discern. Ladat chachma umusser, right? To know wisdom and instruction. And the very next word, to discern. What does your English book say? Comprehend. Okay, that's good. Lars? Uh, to, no, after that. After that, keep going. To know wisdom and instruction. And then the next word after, something like, to, to perceive words of understanding, something like that. Okay, cool. All right, so we got like comprehend, perceive, and discern. All right, um, Brian, try to make me not forget that. All right, if we, if, I want to see, we're going to go with discern. That's our picture here, right? In fact, let me get the art scroll. Just, oh, you know, I'm not a big fan of art scroll. You guys know that, but we're doing the English for the sake of scholarship here. So let's, let's see what it says. It's going to be discern, I think, but let's see. In order to make known, wait a minute, words of wisdom, to make words of understanding di discernible. Okay. There you go. All right, let's go. So we got, again, what we got? Perceive, comprehend, and discern. 
All right. All right. Well, they changed the website. I think they they changed the look a little bit. Wow, this is this going to ruin everything we do. <laughs> wow, I'm not liking this. Hold on, I like the way it used to be. Hold on a second. What happened here? I think they changed everything. Not that it matters. Just you know, familiarity. Let's see here. Yeah, Merriam-Webster redid their site. Okay. It's like when uh, you know the, the new like a new print of the of the Torah, you know. So it just takes you back at first. So here you go, guys. Let's go. Brian, Mike is yours. Follow my lead to start and stop whenever I feel the need to start and stop you. Uh, definition of discern? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a transitive verb, number one, A, to detect with the eyes. It discerned a figure approaching through the fog. B, to detect with senses other than vision, such as discerned a strange color. All right, so stop. Odor, odor, sorry. Stop, stop. So to know wisdom and instruction to discern the words of understanding. So you're supposed to... Basically, read it. It's a book. It's got text, right? But first, you got to read it. We're assuming you're reading a book, right? You're in. You're at least at the level where you've been given a book of Mishlei or Torah or something, and you're you're trying to read, right? That's good. Approaching the material, right? That's called par. That's the bar, right? Anything short of that, you're you're just you're you're annoying and you're not playing the game right, right? You know, step one. And that's good. That's actually a nice finish, right? How do I know? How do you know when you even give someone a time of day? Is, this, is that, you know, to bring our famous Facebook model into this, our, our debates, right? How do you know when to be even, how do you know someone's playing the game? Are you approaching the material? I mean, can't we just wipe out like 95% of those against gear already? Just in that statement alone. <laughs> That's it. So you, you need to be sitting with a book open and willing to look at the text. So therefore, it's not our opinion at this point any further, right? If, if you are not discerning by the definition of the word, this is not like, uh, you know, well, you change the definition, right, by cats. You, you have the definition here to discern. And Shlomo is telling you, are you, are you willing to discern? Are you, are you at the level of discerning? So this is interesting. Let's see it again. To know wisdom and instruction. Anyway, this is going to be deep. Hold on a second. I'm feeling this coming on my brain. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. To know this, I'm seeing a different angle here. I want to, I want to, I want to just think. For, so I'm going to go silent for here a minute. Hold on. This is heavy. I'm, uh, this is, there's something coming down for sure. I, I, I see there's many dimensions opening up here. Hold on a second. Let's keep going. I want to, this is, the, we're going to come back to this. This is something, there's something brewing. Um, with the eyes to detect with the senses other than a vision, discerned a strange odor. What does that mean, discern a strange odor? Isn't it pretty obvious if you smelled, if you smelled it, then there was an odor? What's the discernment? How do you discern a strange odor? Discern a figure through the fog. So it was foggy. There was a guy coming through the door, and I was trying to find out if it was uh, Scooby-Doo or Shaggy. Right? We want to know if it's the boogeyman or if it's, you know, that's like Hollywood 101, the first level of discerning. So I would say – I'm going to throw this out at you guys, Okay. I think this is what, I, again, I'm just, we're just getting started. I'm learning the Talmud. All right. Get you, you, you with me in my, in my analogy here, all right? You got the students around. I'm learning the Talmud and the rabbi image that everybody wants to show. He knows everything. He doesn't make mistakes. And he, he tells it like he's known it his whole life. Right. 
you know, Rav, uh, Rav says in the Talmud that the, the Goyim have no portion of the Torah, and everyone's saying, like, okay, now, which which word did you use? Is it Akum? Is it Goy? Is it Ger? Like, you know, what, what's going on here? But if, if, if I'm the master of Torah in my image, that's not even a question. It's just not even a question. I already know this cold. But if you guys, you know, you've seen how I approach the Talmud, right? I don't, I don't read it like I know what I'm talking about. Because I, th- and I think that's what Shlomo is saying. Any time you open text, like Brian said, first, how did you say it, Brian? Let me see what you said there. Approaching the material, right? You need to, you, you can't, can you drive a golf ball without setting the ball on the tee? Can you skip that step? You cannot skip that step. I don't care if you're Tiger Woods, Ben Hogan, Every golfer does it the same way. You bend over and you put the ball on the tee, okay? As the old cliche is, every guy puts his pants on the same way every morning. So step one is when you approach the material, discern the text. Why do you assume that you know it when you open up a book? I think that's the fallacy in crime number one. Hey, did you guys hear about the new Gare thing? Oh, yeah, the convert. I already know that. Yeah, I already know that. I've known that all my life. This is practically simple. You guys are still learning that? There's no Gare Toe Shop today. Don't you know that? So I think what, what Shlomo is saying in, in the schools of wisdom is any time you, you, you approach the material, and I'm going to coach you on that, Brian, from now on, because that's the way you should say it. The certain text. <laughs> You know, I don't care how well you know it. Discern the text. Look at it and discern the text. So look what Shomo is saying now. To know wisdom and instruction. To discern the words of understanding. I don't know what that means yet. I'm discerning that text. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm capable of knowing what this means. If the step one of wisdom is to discern the text... Is it logical that I would know what that means? This is a logical question I'm asking you. If we are to approach the material and discern the text, is it possible logically that I would understand what we're reading right now? 100% not, right? I can't know. As they say in Texas, I can't know. I have no idea what we're, what we're reading right now. So then here's another question, Right? Theoretically, could I have come to this class prepared and taught this in the style that we give this class? No, 100% not. Now, if you want to have no interaction with me, like I'm known when he videotapes my lectures and I come in front of a camera, right? That means I sat and I did it and you guys were all running around in your lives and you got the YouTube link and you, you caught the video and then you, you gave a like button on Facebook and I said, hey, thanks, Brian, that was nice of you. That's the end of it. But that's not what we're doing here. So by definition, we have to be able to discern the text. And you cannot skip that step. If you skip that step, look what you're doing. I'm assuming then that I know what it means to discern in the words of understanding. How can I know that? This is a very nice kid she's she's saying here. Step one is you can't know. <laughs> It's not even a modesty thing. It's not a humility thing. It, you know, it's, it's like saying, hey, Tiger, how far can you hit the golf ball? I can't. Why not, Tiger? Because the ball's not on the tee. If the ball was on the tee and then I saw the weather conditions and such, then I could tell you about how far I could hit the ball. So my point is, is that why is it a good analogy or metaphor to say you're discerning an, an image or a figure coming through the fog? Because what is Torah before you've discerned it? Is it not foggy? And that, that's a great way of explaining it. I never had words to explain this. This is why I pronounce words wrong when I teach, right? Because it's foggy. <laughs> it's supposed to be It's all right, purposely foggy. You know, I can't claim to know every word of the Talmud without looking it up in the dictionary. And the, you, know, you know what people do when they, when they reach the fog? They say in the original, and they don't translate it like they knew it. 
That's how it all. Yeah, I know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this. Huh? Yeah, sure. Okay, that's your style. Fine, but you. I'm sorry, my friend. You have left out the level of discernment. Because even though you're teaching a bunch of goyim, okay, you want to say it that way? Because most people do. Or you want to teach a bunch of idiots in driving school? Whatever the genre. Whatever the genre, right? The fact is, Bozo, you, the teacher, you are learning it also. So I can I can be as, as – make as many derogatory comments as necessary, okay, about how I'm on a higher level. But at the same time, I am learning the Proverbs 1, 2 here also uh, by definition, right? Perforce, I am learning it here. Even as much as I want to say I know it, I'm the master, I'm the rabbi, right? By the laws of logic, am I learning Proverbs 1, 2 as I teach it? And, in fact, give me a one or two on that one. 100%. Uh, again, I don't care how much you can, you can claim to know it. That's fine. You're, I admit you're a master. You're the best. You're Moshe Rabbeinu incarnate, right? Exactly. I'm approaching the material. By definition, I am learning it too. I have to discern. Okay? Now, I can very easily go open up the Migros Kedolos and read the definitions here and, and make it like I've known this all my life. And I was thinking, I was meditating about this tonight when you guys were watching the uh, the Earth video, right? I, I usually, I don't listen to that video when I put it on for you guys. I always go in my own little meditation. And I was thinking, what am, what, what are we doing really with the gear thing different than all other forms of teaching? And I realized this. The, the gear format is is a proper teaching, teacher, student relationship, meaning it's, 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 it's Mishle. Right, it's conscious minds and giving over Torah consciously in a conscious position, meaning moron man doesn't have a place in this class. One or two, we have to all be conscious, alert, awake. I'm, I'm, and the point is, me too. If I'm not, then it's it's just that's that's not what we're doing. What what generally religious study does is it teaches. I'm sorry to say, from moron man. And, no, and it's not I'm, not, I'm not making a crime here. I'm saying they just don't know better. I don't know why it never occurred to people to, uh, thought, to, to teach. I literally just wrote this in my notes tonight before class. It has become acceptable in the norm that religion is not called approaching the material and it's not called discerning. You're supposed to discern afterwards. Oh, well, what do you think? About the class, Marge, well, you know, he was interesting. It was a nice insight. Yeah, I thought so, too. You're looking in the, in the foggy uh, image in the mirror, in, the, in, in your rear view mirror as you drive away. And that is, the, that is the, the klipa that I think is the New Testament. And also when Art Scroll makes mistakes, and in general, this Lafib Shuto thing. As I, I've been looking at the translations. They always translate it when it goes wrong into passive rather than active, right? It was always that, you know, what happened five minutes later looking back in retrospect? No one's ever telling you, hey, what happened now? Right, the famous thing about, you know, Joseph surprised the brothers and said, I, I'm Joseph, and then they, they couldn't answer him. Rashi says because they were ashamed. That's called a fib shuto. That's what happened, okay, five minutes afterwards. They felt really stupid after having sold them. But what about, hey, did you see what God just did? I am Joseph. And they said, wow, hey, that's called discernment. You want to know what discernment is, Brian? Here's your favorite guy, Joseph. The brothers try to figure out who is this crazy Egyptian who seems somewhat familiar. How's that for discernment? Right? Approaching the material. You know, Joseph was probably just giving him endless material. Inside jokes, you know, family I mean, it was coming through, and there's there, but it was, it was foggy. It was it was discerning, and then it came, you know, to the words of understanding. I am Joseph. Do you get more understanding than that? Joseph sits there and tells you, "Hey, everybody, I'm Joseph." You'll 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 get it real quick. But I still am bothered by Shlomo's introduction. I'm seeing. I'm, I'm discerning. Now I know that word. I am. I'm, I'm right now. I'm with you. I am discerning with you. You guys, so if, if the Torah is true in an objective reality, is it safe? Now, this is a big experiment. This is going to be 
a world-breaking experiment right now. You believe me? One or two. I just copped a, a tremendous experiment we can do. Watch this. I'm experiencing something right now. Okay? Type one or two if you're experiencing something too. And this is like a David, this is like one of those David Copperfield tricks, right? And I'm guessing you're probably discerning what is the relationship between to know wisdom and instruction and then how it relates to the word to discern, one or two. Isn't that it? Because you see there's something there in there. Is it like a double reiteration? Is it is it a clarification? Is he quantifying it? What, what is he doing there, really? Do you guys all see the fogginess? Is that, is that where your fogginess is? Type two if that's not your fogginess. Everybody saying one here? Interesting, isn't it? By definition, we're seeing an objective truth before our eyes. Everyone's being foggy the same way. We are all blurred. There's some fog. There's fog there. And we're all seeing it. We're all experiencing this. There's something there. Now, at the, we all know, too, at the end of this lesson, we're going to get the answer because we always do. Right? And then, you know, it's going to answer up all the fog issues that we have. But this is what happens in Torah. See, the, the Torah is, you know, God doesn't change. These words were written a long time ago, and Shlomo's telling you what his fog was. This is amazing. In fact, how do you, how do you, what do you call the Shekhinah? Thick fog. We're trying to get revelation of the Shekhinah here. It's there. It's there. You know, Brian was all upset about the video not having the cosmos. Well, look at the picture in front of you, Brian. <laughs> I just noticed that. <laughs> There's your cosmos. It had to come through Torah, not through a YouTube video. <laughs> so there's something there there's something there to know wisdom hold on I really want to just meditate on this for a minute I'm going to go quiet here I want to there's something coming down here very important hold on I want to get this I'm determined to get this now so I'm going quiet Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. I want to think about how I want to say this. One second. Yeah. Yeah. Wisdom and instruction are the foggy things. And then when they're when they're in the when they're in their foggy format, they are words of understanding. So you have to discern. And when you understand that you're discerning the words of understanding, you know, basically they don't change, but they transition to allow you to delve deeper into uh, wisdom and instruction. So to, it's discerning is the process of knowing. You guys see that? It really turns the whole thing on its ear. There's many points of reference in this verse. Each one can stand on its own. But since we're looking at it from discerning, you see that you, you, are, you're, you are there in the verse discerning. You are not knowing and you're not wisdom and you're not instruction and you're not words of understanding. Why is that? Why are none of those words you? Why, why is it you guys can only be discerning and none of the other words? And that's why there's fog by all of you? I want to know why? Why? The Norwegian team has it. Go ahead. <laughs> the answer is because of Brian, Brian Stanek Jr., 
those words are called the material. They're already there. They were there before you got there. Where were the words of understanding? They were in the material that you're now approaching. Where, where will the wisdom and instruction come from? From the material that you're standing in front of, right? What, you know, where will you know from? You, you obviously don't know. You only know because God will open up your mind uh, in this, in the, from fog to clarity. Am I understanding? He's trying to say, don't approach Torah thinking you know everything. Rather, what am I making you understand like a fog? 100%, Brandon, you got it. That's why you guys don't exist anywhere but what Brandon said. All you can do is stand there and say, I don't get it. The more you say you do get it, then you're just denying the fog and you're, um, I don't want to say what you're doing because you know what you're doing if you do that. And again, it, it, and the thing is, it looks like a test of humility, but it isn't. It just isn't. Right? You know, it's like when Peyton Manning drops back to throw the ball. Right? At the very first second, does he know what's going on? No. He's got to read the defense. You don't know. He's not. I mean, this is the, the, remember the, the meme that went on Facebook today. A prophet doesn't see the future. He tells the truth. Right? If you're not discerning, you're saying you're a prophet who sees the future. I, I already know what the Torah is going to say. I already know. I already know. I know that. I already know. I already know. Prophecy, right, is just letting the Shekhinah speak to you. That's where, you know, to know wisdom and instruction. I think we're inside. What do you think? I think we got it. Now it should come down real clean. And I, we're going to test it. We're going to test this. At the, uh, I want, I want, Brian, if you can make a note to remind me in case I forget. At the end of today, I want to do an experiment, maybe take a quote on our famous inspiration quotes on Google, and I want to take a very difficult quote, and I want to embrace the fog. Okay? I want to embrace the fog. In fact, you know what? We'll do it with the definitions on Webster. Okay? We're, we're going to continue with that mantra today. Embrace the fog, which we've been doing. We always say we know nothing. But now we're going to do it with intention, okay? Do, my, I'm commanding you guys, do not try to know. Let's see if it works, right? Don't know. Just allow yourself to not know. And if there is a God, and if there is wisdom, and if there is Torah, and if there is the revelation of the Shekhinah, by definition, that's right, it will be revealed to you. You will try to discern, you will be in fog, understanding will illuminate like the breastplate of the cone guttle and you will then know wisdom and instruction which means you will get the wisdom ancient wisdom the school of wisdom and you will get the the instruction of how to refine yourself and continue on a straight path you agree it's a good 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 test let's try it so that's that's how we're going to look at discerning so far okay brian grab the mic let's go number two number two to recognize or identify as separate and distinct, as in discern right from wrong. You didn't read discriminate. Discriminate, sorry. It was in red. Yeah. So, there's a, so am I right in assuming that there's a lot of words of understanding there? I can already rec- I can count recognize, identify, separate, distinct, and discriminate, and right from wrong. Those are called words of understanding. Because right now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know those are heavy words. So they probably have deep meanings, one or two. Exactly, but it's too loaded. You, you are not smart enough to know this. It is impossible. It is so loaded. That is so loaded Okay, you cannot know that. That's why you have to discern. It is impossible for you to know what that means. Each one of those words is a world. That's why you have to discern. So that's what step one where we're at. In your mind, you should say, I have no idea. None. None. Zero. Not 0.1%. I have no idea what's going on. Are you with me? It should be utterly foggy and cloudy for you. 100% fog. Meaning you know something's there. There's kind of light coming through. But I have no idea what it's saying. 
my process is I'm not even thinking about it. Right now, I have, I'm not – that is not on my mind. Those words of understanding are – it's as if they are not there as I speak to you. We're going to – we're. I'm not – I don't know what you're talking about, Lars. I'm not there. I have no idea. I am lost in fog. With me? I don't want to know. I really don't want to know. So the reason why I don't want to know is because what Brian said, it's too heavy. It's loaded. So now that we've adjusted, we're in We're in the uh, – I think it's nice that you think you know because simply because you – exactly. But we don't know. It's too loaded. Way too loaded. Now we're going to – now, but, but we recognize that we're morons. That's the thing. We recognize. We accept it. We embrace it. We found the fog. Now, Brian, let's go back inside. Ready? Are you with me? Let's go in. Now, read it again slowly. Let's come out of the fog. Go ahead. Let's let the God revelation, Shina, open our eyes. It should work. Go ahead. Go real slow. Follow my lead. Definition of discern, point two. Two, recognize. Stop. So there's the boogeyman coming out of the fog. Aren't you first going to try to recognize who it is? Right? You're driving on a mountain road. And there's fog, and it might be, uh, you know, you see something coming at you. It might be whatever it is, headlights of a car, right? You got to recognize all the time. Bad weather driving, to keep to our driving school analogy, right? Is it a tree? Is it an animal? You, you got to recognize it. You, you don't have time to sit and play games. What is it? Okay? You just got to recognize, okay, there's headlights. He's coming. Is he swerving in my lane? That's right. I'm slowing down. Is he swerving in my lane? All right, he's good. He's good. He is good. He slowed down. He gave me the the verbal the the, the nonverbal communication. All right, who's this guy behind me? What's he doing? Has he got his brights on? Why is he doing that? There's fog out here, right? Just recognize. Period. Period. So, the analogy of today is we're in the Talmud. Okay, imagine all the time we're in the Talmud because it's just as foreign to you as it is to me. Why? Because it's foggy. One or two. So we start saying, Amar Rava. Rava says that on Passover, we sell, we, we burn our leavened bread. Can you begin to understand that statement? We're talking now about Passover. It's good. Exactly, but you can recognize it. It's Passover. Is that enough for you? Is it enough for you to know this guy's a rabbi talking about Passover? The answer should be one yes. Why? Because it means we're not talking about anything else. I don't know about Passover. I don't know. All I know is we're not talking about Shabbos. We're not talking about kosher. We're not talking about anything in Judaism or Torah. All we're talking about is some rabbi named Rava, the tractate of Sachim. And we're talking about Passover. That's all I know. Do you realize what algorithmic process you've just done just by recognizing? You realize how powerful that is just recognizing? When LeBron James goes to shoot a basket, what are the chances of him making a hoop and the opposite hoop? Go ahead. Any takers? It's, it's zero. Nobody throws the ball behind their head. Type in zero. Okay. Now, what are the chances of the ball being 10 feet to the left or 10 feet to the right or 10 feet over the hoop or throwing its 10 feet spike to the ground? Zero. Zero. Therefore, once you've recognized LeBron James, professional athlete. There you go. Thank you, Brian. He's a pro, okay? He's not David Katz. We can trust this guy. He is probably going to get it near the rim every single time, one or two. So, therefore, therefore, you've recognized it's a game. Objective is to get the ball in the hoop, Okay? You can now assume that he is not playing football still, 
right? He's not, this is not a charity event with the Harlem Globetrotters where he purposely throws it behind his head, okay? You can, you, you're gaining a recognition of the environment. Are you with me? Just think about how powerful that idea is already. We're talking, do you realize, I'm gonna, here, it just popped in my head. It just popped in my head. And you, Brian, you've already said it. What are we doing? In fact, let me make sure it was Brian that said it. Someone said it. Brian said it. Brian has finished the entire lecture. I could probably pack up and go home right now. I am home, but that's beside the point. What are we doing? I think we've, we, we've literally hit the nail on the head. We're done. Anyway, Brian, you remember what you said? This is how you wake up more on men. This is how you wake up more on men. It's called get your bearings. Recognize. Right? In my driving school, what did I do? I recognized. Oh, yeah. This is a class. This is a lesson. There's books. I am a bit of a teacher. Okay, it's like just like twenty five thousand dollar pyramid, right? <laughs> you know, school, uh, book, <laughs> just naming words out. Oh, uh, the Rabbi David Katz program needs to get his license. Yes, Bing. Discern is the word. You know, we we didn't see we didn't get this in the Hebrew. You know, we were looking at it from a different angle in the Hebrew. This is where English is a is a tremendous victory. You see. Once you admit, see, the problem is moron man doesn't um, doesn't discern. He doesn't believe in discerning. What what proper moron man does? See, there's two kinds of morons: people that are eternally moronic, and people that recognize that they're morons. When you wake up in the morning, you're a moron. You know, people are saying, hey, did you cook my eggs yet? You're like, hey, I just woke up. I don't know. I just got done, you know, changing the lawnmower fuel and my, uh, with my next door neighbor in a very strange dream. And now you're asking me, did I cook your eggs? Can I wake up, please? <laughs> That's what it's like in my house getting the kids ready. You know, it's like, Abba, Abba, can I take my cards to school? I'm saying, can I, you know, yeah, can I get dressed, please, and get coffee in me? Can I sit down and check my Facebook messages? <laughs> That's actually what happens. but It's actually kind of fun. <laughs> but anyways, um, the point is, you see the point. If you acknowledge discerning, then you don't need to beat yourself up for being more on man. You embrace more on man. You're groggy. You're waking up. Right, and that's why I do check my Facebook messages in the morning. Why? Because it's an utterly stupid, pathetic way to wake up every day. But it's easy. It's fun. It's casual. You see, what I'm saying you can't just jump in, Rashi Toastfus already. Okay, seven in the morning. Here we go. No, the kids are watching cartoons. They gotta brush their teeth. Okay, they're asking me what's for breakfast. I really don't want to take them to school. So I sit in my stender. I have, my, I have to unplug my cell phone, check the messages, what's going on, what's going on in Gearland, right? That's discerning. Just allow there to be fog. Embrace the fog. Is discern in Hebrew lahavin animavin. Uh, it's close. It's more like uh, it is lahavin, but it's more like splitting hairs, right? Why didn't you understand, Eric? Because it was too obtuse for you. So when you broke it down in your mind and you, and you, you said, ah, okay, I see now what you're saying. That's what you did. You were Lehavin, right? You broke it down. You see? There was something holding you back, and now you got it. That's Lehavin. Um, so I really like this concept, right? Discerning is just appreciate the fog. Let there be fog. Embrace the fog. Step one, let there be fog. <laughs> In fact, you know, let there be light, you know. Okay, now, recognize or identify as separate and distinct. I'm back in fog. I have no idea what that means. Did you guys feel the fog just now? You should have. It was way too powerful to understand 
Way too powerful to understand that. You know, that's when you're talking socially one on one with someone. They're like, yeah, you know, I was had this new job. And it was just like so hard to identify as separate and distinct the new tasks that I had to do on the job. You know what I mean? Brian, do you know what I mean by that? Brian's like, yeah, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was different. I did that all the time. It's very hard. I know. I know. <laughs> so you're in, you're foggy. And if you're around a woman, hello, Loretta, right? Loretta with two R's and two T's. Then she's going to say, this guy has no idea what I'm talking about. Let's see if he cares about me. And he's going to say, uh, what exactly did you mean by identify as separate and distinct? <laughs> so let's go back and find out. To recognize, now, focus. As Brian said, focus. To recognize. Or. So forget recognize. We already did that. Or in Talmudic wisdom is get it out of here. It's something different. And in Hebrew, it's Ella, Aleph, Lamed, Aleph. All right, forget, recognize. It doesn't exist. Clear it out of your brain. We've already done it. Now, identify as separate and distinct. It's not just separate and it's not distinct. It's separate and distinct. And it's, and it's something you identify. What is an example? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Identify as separate and distinct. Okay, I got it. How many of you have heard of the tribe of Levi? How many of you have heard of Kohanim? Is a Kohen a Levi? Yes, he is. He's from the tribe of Levi. But he's separate and distinct and identified. Thank you. Okay. So... We, so therefore, in the Torah, identify as separate and distinct. The Kohen is, is, is different from Levi. Let's continue just to see what happens. Discriminate. No, I don't want to go there. That's too far. Uh, hold on one second. I just want to run out for one second. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, we're going to do a little game, all right? Who wants to play a game? Who wants to play a game? All right. This chat room is now called I Get Gear, all right? It's the Facebook I Get Gear group, and I'm a new member, okay? I just joined your group, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm going to type in the chat box, and I want you guys to interact with me, Okay. Who wants to take a shot? This is the I Get Gear group. Right? Russell's big yarmulke. Okay? Right, so don't, don't, don't jump on me too much. Hold on, because I got to see the flow here. Hold on. Okay? Keep it light on me. Hold on. end of exercise my question to you guys is why did nobody tell me that this is gear like rabbi david katz would do (laughs) this is a personal question i'm asking you that's where i'm foggy nobody beat me up with gear number two Number two, I thought the Noahide gear is the same discerning question as Levy and Cohen, is it not? Right? All Cohen is Levy, but not all Levy is Cohen. All Noahide are gear, but not all gear are Noahide. Therefore, when when this person 
comes into our world and starts saying hi, blah, 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 that's where it's foggy. Were you all foggy with me? Probably very foggy. You didn't know where I was going. Right? Where you, you were trying, but the angle was... Uh, but you, you, the point is, one or two, were you, did I make you guys foggy? It's not the photographer's fault. Bigfoot, Bigfoot is just blurry. <laughs> so then, because you, I made you discern who I am. You had to discern who I was. Right? So I'm guessing you didn't know yet enough. Yeah, you wanted to know more. Exactly. Exactly. And only I knew really the answer because I knew where I wanted to go because I'm, I'm me and you guys are not me. Right? Every, every one of you is playing a game and we're trying to discern it out of you, so to speak. My point is, I think that's a good example, right, in, in, in real life situation, how to get to discern faster. Agreed? Number one, recognize the, blur, the fogginess or the blurriness. Right? And then sit in the discerning and let yourself discern. Right? What you did do was you guys picked up on my words of understanding. You all attacked it very quickly. Did you see that? You used my own words against me every time. Every time. See that? <laughs> this is really weird. <laughs> this is weird because that's what I'm saying. I would have said, hey, man, you're gear, but – Gear wasn't part of the equation because those were not the words of understanding offered. You see? It's just an interesting uh, observation. You guys stuck to the text. You stuck to the text. You didn't bring, bring words off the text. Why that is? Personality. I don't know. Whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't immediately jump to that. I would keep the door open to that you had a Jewish soul wanted to know more. Um, yeah, you were going for the conversion. But, but that's the thing. Um, Eric, I told you it was the I Get Gear group. See what I'm saying? If you want to convert, go to the I Love Judaism group. Why are you in the I Get Gear group? That was part of the construct. See? Just, uh, just saying the, 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 the certain set of, of, of variables. But now you can see, every, you, everyone can see where everyone was blind and in fog, right? I think it's very good. Everyone had a particular set of fog, and everyone was discerning to get through it. Right, Eric, you wanted to help me see a certain thing. You, you saw a, a certain vision with me, right? And you wanted to clear the fog a certain way, which is fine. Everyone had their style. So now, now that we understand, identify as separate and distinct. I mean, that's, Eric, that's what you did. You said, hey, 613 is separate and distinct away from 7, period. I would say, Eric, you discerned very well, right? You, 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 you really brought uh, things out that were not, not in the words of understanding. You took it off the page. Um, to each his own. My point is, is that um, I want to think of more, one one more example of identify as separate and distinct. Something a little bit more tangible. Let me just think for a second. Wide receiver and tight end, Rob Gronkowski. You're watching football with people that know football, and people that don't know football, right? So when you first started learning about football, the guys in the room, didn't the the, the term tight end seem a little funny to you? It did to me. I remember in fifth grade, they were like, the guy's a (laughs) a tight end. I thought, what kind of position is that? Are you serious? We're supposed to take it seriously? So I thought, you know, the tight end was, yeah, I thought the tight end of the team was like the real bozo, the guy that didn't do anything. So I remember as a, as a cocky young kid, like, oh, huh, you're probably the tight end. <laughs> you know, that's what I thought. But the, the point is, is all, 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 it's, all it's saying is because the tight end catches the ball, 
and so do wide receivers, right? But it's a different – it is uh, – how you want to say it? Identify as separate and distinct, right? It's a totally different position on the field. Now I think we've, we've, we've stated something. Uh, you can probably take this in a million different directions, right? Um, how many of you have a tablet? One or, just type – give me a one or two if you have a tablet. Okay, so um, Eric, what kind of tablet do you have? Oh, yeah, I got one just like that. I got the Samsung Galaxy. How do you feel about that, what I just said? Yes, it is. Tablet's a tablet. <laughs> but, but, but imagine, we're, we're going out, you know, a, a work relationship, okay? Eric, you're trying to sell me these things you're doing, whatever it is, oil investments, whatever it was you said you're doing, right? And we go out, we're having lunch. It's kosher, don't worry. And and you you're you you you're checking your email on your iPad, and I'm I'm like yeah I got I got an I got a tablet at home too it's uh, just like you a Samsung Galaxy, right? How do you feel about that, Eric? How would you feel socially? I'm not asking if you had a problem with it. I'm asking, do you sense the fog? Because I just put fog all over you. What I'm basically telling you and breathing down your neck is, hey, you love technology. I have no idea. My grandmother bought me a tablet. I don't know how to use it. This is not an insult. What I'm saying is there's a personality clash here because it's going to come up again and again and again and again and again. Eventually, we're not going to communicate on a certain point, and it's going to get a little funny. Okay? That's called fog. There's going to be fog because you're not approaching the material. I'm giving you material. Remember we said in Michelet last week or whatever it was, know who you're sitting across from. Right? I am not technologically savvy. You are technologically savvy. Even if you're not, I say you are because I don't know the difference. So it's going to come up in the working relationship. That's fine. You can appreciate all you want. Noahides love gear and gear love Noahides, but there's going to be a, a, a miscommunication at some point because of the fog, right? You're going to have to settle down and get to the discerning, except the fog. See, you're, you're, you're din. You, we know that, right? You're fighting the fog. Don't fight the fog. Just admit there is fog here. This is blurry. I don't get it. See what I'm saying? It's, just, it's, it's, it's not an intelligent thing. You're trying to be intelligent. We just woke up, right? You just realize, oh, this guy doesn't know the difference between tablets and tablets. And it, it's a benign thing. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter in terms of objectivity. Are you better than me or not? It's not the question. The question is, I just threw a curveball at you, right? You are over there and I'm over here. How are we going to get back on the same page? That's the problem. You have to accept the fog, right? You got to start discerning because there will be more fog to come, right? So now the waitress is going to come and she's going to say, hey, you guys ready to order? And you're going to say, no, um, I have Din. My name is Eric. And you didn't even give us our, our, our menus yet. She'll say, oh, I'm sorry about that. She comes back and she gives us two iPads for menus. You know, in Israel, they do that. I don't know if they do it where you guys are. They give you an iPad with the menu on it. Have you seen that? One or two. Okay, so now I'm going to say, <laughs> I don't even know how to use this thing. It's not like my Samsung. How do you feel about that now? Now I'm nervous. I'm, I'm just not comfortable. Right? I don't like iPads. I don't believe in technology. Okay, my grandmother bought me the thing. I have an old school phone. Right? It's just not for me. So now I'm, I'm, I'm getting upset. You're upset that the waitress didn't bring the menus. Okay? More fog. I'm, a, I don't, I'm upset because can't you just bring me a menu with you know, old style? They don't do it like they used to. Okay? I want to do business the old-fashioned way. 
The next thing you know, you're telling me, hey, we can outfit the entire business with iPads and we can all talk all the time on Messenger and iPads. <laughs> you see my point? You see my point? You know, you went to the old fashioned and uh, they have no Wi Fi, okay? Now I can't check my email. Why'd you take me to an old fashioned place where I can't even check my email? There's no Wi Fi? What place has no Wi Fi? Couldn't we have gone to a place with Wi Fi? <laughs> my point is you guys see what I'm saying? There's always fog in discerning. Always. It's not a contest. You're better than me because you like old school. No, it just is. People are different, right? I am not like my co-author, Chaim Chlorfein. We found that out writing the book. He is a Levy. I'm a Cohen. And it, it, countless arguments it, 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 it caused. And so we finally discern through the fog. He explains it like a Levy, and I explain it like a, a Cohen. It's it. So... Again, embrace the fog, right? Why didn't she bring the menus on time? Because she didn't, okay? Now, start to pay attention. Now, you'll, you'll start to notice if the manager was sick today, the cook messed up some guy's food, right? You will recognize through the fog. There's a reason. She's not like, I hate guys with iPads, so I'm not going to bring them the menu. Okay, there's a reason why she didn't bring it on time. And this goes for everything in the world. You know, you know, God, why did you bring fog on the highway when I got to get home for dinner? Well, God has a reason for the fog. You're foggy. That's why you have a problem with it. You expected sunny skies 365, 24-7. Doesn't work that way. Right? You thought you already knew the answer. Hey, when you wake up in the morning, you say, hey, how's it going to be out there today, Brian? Oh, probably be perfect weather, and nothing is going to happen today bad, you know. I'm going to do everything I want to do. No one's going to get in my way. Uh, you know, people might do nice gestures along the way, kind deeds to help me get by. It's going to be a great day. So then the first thing when you, you, know, when you wake up and you get in your car, people are driving slow. You almost got in a traffic accident. The cop pulled you over by mistake. He was, thought it, he was thinking you were somebody else. You're saying, why? Why? <laughs> what happened to my fantasy of a perfect day? <laughs> the point is, embrace the fog, right? Embrace it. Here we go. Um, separate and distinct, right? There are good days and there are bad days. There are both days, but some are good and some are bad. You hop this, one or two. All right, now the last one is discriminate. You're not as good as me because you have an iPad. Just kidding. Um, discern right from wrong. That's what discriminate means. I don't believe them. Do you guys believe them? That's what discriminate means? Right and wrong? Why am I asking you this? Why didn't I ask you that? Why? Why? Exactly. It got foggy. It got foggy. We approached the material and it got foggy. It's a fractal. Boker Tov. It's a fractal. It's not going away. Okay? <laughs> it's a fractal. It's not going away. Everybody click on discriminate. Brian, take the mic, please. Discriminate. To unfairly treat a person or a group of people differently from other group or people. I'm very mad. Who knows why I'm mad? Who knows why I'm mad? This is a major crime against humanity that just happened. I'm not joking. Why am I mad? Anybody want to take a shot at it? We just read... On our previous page, a definition for discrimination. Is that a correct statement? Exactly. Thank you, Loretta, with one R. You lied to me. Totally just lied to me. Completely. Completely. 
Completely. You basically just said, hey, there's no fog here. No fog. You don't need to discern. Hey, you don't need to discern nothing. It's all good. It's all good. Let me tell you what discriminate means. It means right or wrong. Doesn't it sound like the snake with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? Discern right from wrong. That's what they want me to believe. Do you see it? Do you see this? Discriminate means to discern right from wrong. Lars, is that a true statement? So then why did the, why did the Merriam-Webster dictionary tell me it was? You see it? This is what I was telling you five minutes later. This is called five minutes later. You see? It's called five minutes later. Joseph and the brothers couldn't answer because they were embarrassed. Five minutes later. When you settle on this thing, you'll say in your mind, yeah, it means to discern from right from wrong. But that was five minutes later. Okay? Five minutes later. What happened to the Shekhinah right now? You see all the fractal truths coming out. I'm very upset now. Because you see it. I told you we were going to get Gila Shekhinah today. Now you've seen it on the backside. You've seen it on the backside. The fact that they gave us a wrong definition, Lars, on the front page. And then we had to click through to get the real definition. And we found out the real definition is nothing like what they told us the definition was. How many people are going to click through on average? How about like 0% to the point where you can't even recognize it? So let's find out what it really does mean. Go ahead. Again, repeat the first definition. Discriminate. To unfairly treat a person or a group of people differently from other people or groups. Right. So there's all kinds of humans. Some are, uh, you know, Caucasian and some are, and are, you know, Chinese, right? Therefore, uh, Chinese are bad and, and, and Caucasian is good. That was, that's called discrimination, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hire one race over another. You don't even say male and female. There's two kinds of people in this world, men and women. Men are better, so let's hire men. Is that a discrimination that I just did? Right, and that's according to the definition. Now let's go back, okay? Um, discriminate. I'm hiring a waiter for my uh, little cute little restaurant. Uh, three guys came in, you know, college kids, nice kids, and a little girl with, uh, you know, attractive looks. Who am I going to hire if I'm going to be uh, discriminating? The girl. Why? Because I'm going to say that I'm discerning right from wrong. In my world, it's right to have, you know, little cute girl waitresses than some guy, you know, trying to be uh, you know, whatever, you know, like you know, TGI of Fridays. You guys read the Fridays? You got the guy with the buttons and the hats and the this, and then they got the girl, but, you know, who does everybody want to see, right? The flair, exactly. So, you know, if we're going to go flair 1A, 1B, let it be the girl. But how can you really say from the first definition, discriminate, discern right and wrong? I wouldn't call that right and wrong. You know, it's not fair to just say that I, I was doing the right thing or the wrong thing by hiring a girl over the guy. It's called discrimination. Right? It's called discrimination. It's more aligned with what we said in our first definition of identify as separate and distinct, right? I have an ad in the paper looking for waiter uh, or waitress position in my restaurant. What I'm really saying in my heart, which was what the Vilna Gone says is Mirma, saying one thing and thinking another. I was saying I want a really cute little girl to come be a waitress in my restaurant. Uh, flare flashy guys need not apply. That's called discrimination. That's not called right and wrong. Now, I might be right and wrong in, you know, 
my belief system. Why would you not want affirmative action and all these things? But, I mean, seriously, would you really call that guy wrong? You know, you're wrong. You should have hired the guy. Well, not really. That's kind of a vulgar way of putting it, isn't it? But if you want to say discriminate, well, you know, you hired an, an inept girl in face of a guy who's just like dynamite. He would have been a really valuable asset to your team. Right, because you discriminated. Let's go. Continue, please, with the uh, the second one. Discriminate to notice and understand that one thing is different from another thing. To recognize a difference between things. Well, that sounds so Talmudic. It hurts. <laughs> like that is so Talmudic. They call that the the nafkamina. And Talmudic law, or my one second, I want to see this. Hold on, the note, and to notice and understand that one thing is different from another thing. Yeah, it's like you know those those IQ tests, right? You know, you know, a, a hand goes in a glove. Uh, you know, those those all those comparison charts, right? Logic, it's logic, it's logic. Comparing and contrasting these things, and which one is different? That's right. Which one's not like the other? So now that's called discriminate. That, that's a positive thing, right? The ability to discriminate. That's kind of nice, isn't it? The word all of a sudden became nice. That's very nice. Very, very nice. So if only girls hot came to get hired, okay, and let's say the guys were just not up for the job. It's got to be a girl now. Okay. So now which one are you going to hire? Okay, girls are girls. It's all the same thing. So you have to put your passions aside, like Vilna Gon says and Evan Schlema, right? And discriminate. Which one is the one that will show up for work, get the job done, fits in the team, fits in the vision, or are you going to be shallow? Right? Are you going to be shallow or are you going to discriminate the right way? Basically, there's, there's good discrimination and bad discrimination. Right, one that fits. The reason why I use in the feminine is because this guy is now being tested. If it's a, if it's all guys, he has less of a test, right? If it's a guy that doesn't fit, you know, a, you know, a really strange geezer, okay, he's not going to hire him, right? But if it's you know a really attractive girl and a lesser attractive girl but somewhat caliber, he's got to overcome himself. It's just the way it is, you know. Or if it's a genre of men. Um, you know, if it's a, a bar and one guy's got huge muscles and can beat people up and he's a barroom bouncer or like a, a guy who's more, you know, the guy, the, the guy that won't drink at night, but he's like Bruce Lee. Right. The other guy is huge, but he wants to have some beers. Right. He, he's a fun guy. We like him. But, you know, he's the guy who's been calling sick. The other guy is like militant. He was an ex-Marine. He doesn't drink. And he like, if you look at him funny, he'll break your neck. Which one are you going to hire? It's a risk, isn't it? Because if it is a bar, you know, is he going to get along with the other staff members? The other guy gets along, but can you trust him? He's more of just a laid back kind of fun guy. Now we're using a bit of a funny example with bars and stuff, but put it anywhere, any employment. Remember what Shlomo says, know who you are sitting across from. You know, you got, if you're the manager, you got to know your staff. You got to know your staff. That is management 101. 101. That fits everything in your life because everything comes down to management, no matter who you are or where you are. You know, when I had to put my kids in, in school, I had to use discrimination and discernment which school to put my kids in. You know, for example, also when my, when my wife passed and I, had, I got my first babysitter, when I was just getting on my feet. The girl got like lost, she lost Reuven. And she was 16 at the time. But you know what? I saw she's a good girl. Now, years later, the kids love this girl and her sisters, and the whole family has become like a second family to my kids. Best decision I ever made. To not just say, you, you, you know, you lost, you, you're irresponsible. You know, I'm gonna get someone who's quote unquote responsible. I saw she had redeeming qualities. Okay. Uh, Brian, keep going with discriminate. Okay. 
Transitive verb form 1A, to mark or perceive the distinguishing or particular features of. Peculiar features. Oh, peculiar. My apologies. That's what I was saying about this girl, the babysitter. I saw she had peculiar features. She liked the kids. They liked her. I'm saying it's a no-brainer. Okay. She was a little bit irresponsible with Reuben. He was like four years old or three years old at the time. Okay. 1B, go ahead. Distinguish, differentiate. Right. So Reuben got lost. All right. Is she an airhead? All right. She just wasn't watching the kids. Or is Reuben three years old and kids that are three years old run away and sometimes they're hard to find? Which one would you say? I mean, give an example, right? Why, why can't I blame my kid? Why can't I blame the fact that he's three and it's a swing set and he wanted to play? She was nervous first time, right? Why can't she make that mistake? <laughs> no, actually, she's, she's a very good girl. I'm telling you, this is a really good family. Uh, and she's not an airhead. That's the thing. That's really the Kiddush. She, the, the, these babysitters really turn out to be very, very good. My kids love them to death. Um, two. Go ahead. What, number two. Uh, to distinguish. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa. How, uh, let's let's play, throw you a bone here, Eric. And here, everyone's a challenge. If Eric was right, what would I, what would the situation have been? And therefore, since I argue with Eric, what wasn't it? She was not foggy. There you go. And the airhead would be what? Foggy. <laughs> Fired and foggy. Right? That's the thing. I didn't see fog. Reuben ran away. Okay. Uh, I saw it. She was responsible, blah, 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 whatever it was. There was no fog, right? Discern your way through it. Let it come clear. If it doesn't come clear, remains foggy, this person's not the right person for the job, right? Not the person for the job. All right, sorry about that. Go ahead, number two. Number two, to distinguish by discerning or exposing differences, especially to distinguish from another like object. You know this. You know what discerning is? Now I got it. How did King David get out of every single disaster he ever entered? The secret of life in Mazel is just discern. How do you discern? Let it happen. Just let it happen. <laughs> if the fog doesn't go away, you discern this is foggy. If the fog goes away, you discern because there's no more fog. It's that simple. The problem is, people, I know that in the Christian faith, uh, discern is a word they use from what I've understood. Is that correct? They use discern in their own funny little way. I don't know what it is. Uh, and, I'm, uh, and I'm guessing because I don't know. I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm guessing it's not the same exact context that we are doing in Mishle. Is that a true statement? Can can Brian? Can you? Can someone please tell me what is Christian discerning, just so I can know? Because I, I don't know. What is what is that thing? Um, Brian, what is it? Tell me. Ah, oh, right. That's wow, wow. That's heavy. That's right. I, I, I know that. That's right. That's right. An assumption, right? Assumption is basic. A, a, a good assumption is is discerning, right? Wow. Is this? This is so not that. This is so not that. Wow. Wow. This is heavy. And the simple assumption of discernment is nothing more than the ability to decide between the truth and error, right? And wrong discernment is the process of making careful distinctions and our thinking. Wow, this is amazing, guys. This is so not Christian. That 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 is very good to know, uh, because it just it shows you the school of wisdom of the Torah, right? Discerning is letting God open your eyes. You don't think anything. Let it be foggy. Trust God. Trust the wisdom. Which definition? 
one that Eric brought, or Shlomo Melech here, or the Shlomo in the chat box, rather. The, the one that was listed in the chat box or the one in from Mishle? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead, Brian. Real quick, my uh, understanding of discernment was the idea that Christians believe they're the ones that have the spirit of God. So they're saved. They're in a different section. They have the spirit, and it's this spirit that helps ah, them, yeah, yeah, helps yeah, yeah, them yeah. read the Bible and get the correct interpretation. So they believe, oh, wow. they believe they have the correct interpretation, and this is why it's difficult for Christians because they will argue – and if they both feel they have the spirit, they both feel they're properly discerning the word. So they're at a type of impasse. So this is really big then. This word discern of Mishle is profound. And this is the, that's, that's the klippa. If, if you tell somebody the wrong definition of discerning, which you're saying all Christians become prophets, right? They're, they're in a serious klippa. Serious clippa. I know everything because I'm blessed to know. Wow, that is heavy. But even heavier is when you look at what it really is. God simply says, relax, let me open your eyes. Don't worry, life will continue. You see nothing right now? Good, it's supposed to be foggy. If it remains foggy, run like the wind. Oh wow! This is uh, this is really good stuff. Really good. Okay, next definition. Um, go ahead. The intransitive verb. Go ahead. Intransitive verb: discriminate. To make a distinction. Discriminate. Read the example. Among historical sources. Discriminate among historical sources. So you, you, there's, there's advanced discrimination, okay? I'm going to argue that Gair is not correct because Jesus didn't teach that in the New Testament. What do you think about that? that is, I'm not talking about the Christian discernment. I'm saying that is a bad case of discrimination, right? Why? Because we're saying... You are you, you you are to accrue wisdom and knowledge. So if I say that con the art scroll convert is not necessarily gear, I am discriminating against art scroll. Is that correct? And it's a chutzpah. I am discriminating against art scroll. I am going on record as saying you cannot trust historically the translation art scroll convert gear. One or two. Because God has shown me every time with perfect accuracy the, the system of Akum, Ben Noah, Gear, this and that, right? And we've seen it. Art Scroll has every time followed the pattern. So I have now made a discrimination in my belief. I am discriminating. Art Scroll cannot be relied upon in translation of the word Gear. They may have a great commentary on the Bolatorium. Or other things, when it comes to this word, they don't get it. Are we real world or exercise? That's it. So you, when you learn your lessons, you have the right to discriminate. Facebook is not a, a, a successful venue to communicate deep ideas. I am discriminating against Facebook. And they say, how can you say that? They are the most successful social platform since uh, the, the modern era and this and that and blah, 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 the statistics. And Mark Zuckerberg's a great guy. How dare you? Why? Because the history of arguments and this and that. And that uh, you know, today with all that Lush and horror stuff, right? That was the volume. Of it. That's right. So, you know, we, 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 have, we have set up parameters of discrimination that we feel justified as it comes through discerning and the, accru and the accruing of wisdom, why do we discern? To know wisdom and instruction. I learned my lesson and I now know better. Brian, continue. Okay. Discriminate 1B, to use good judgment. Well, that's interesting. Discriminate to use good judgment. Do you guys, you know, in, in Shlomo, 
There's a word called arum. Let me do this here. Arum, which means cunning. And they say the simpleton becomes cunning, arum. And the reason why it's a good thing, and this is still not the Christian definition, right? The Christian definition says, I always make good judgment, right? That's what you're describing to me, right? Of course I make good judgment. I know what I'm doing. Of course I do. What what this word is saying in truth is you're not always gonna you're not always gonna clear the fog. Right? Yeah, they deny the fog. Exactly. They deny the fog. I'm saying despite the fog, I I predict this. Right? You know, you know, we we, we have a couple of decisions. We're gonna go on a gear tour. You can either go to Australia, Korea, or Canada. Where do you want to go? Uh, let's go to Canada. Well, why? Do I know? No. Is it foggy? Absolutely. Why is it good judgment? Because I can't know. Right? Remember, a prophet doesn't know the future. He only speaks the truth. All I can say is it seems to me that, you know, it's more close to home. I fit in. I don't know what's going on in Korea. That could be, who knows? Not yet. Maybe next time. Australia could go too far right now. Let's just go to Canada, right? That's a case. Let's call it, assuming the variables work out, right? A, a good decision, right? You're, you're you're acknowledging the fog. You're not denying the fog. You're you're trying to dispel as much fog as you can based on what God has given you, right? Um, go ahead now, uh, number two. To make a difference in treatment or favor on a basis other than individual merit, discriminate in favor of your friends or discriminate against a certain nationality. Isn't that bias? To make a difference in treatment. It's related, okay. To make a difference in treatment or favor on a basis other than individual so that means that affirmative action is, discrimi- is discrimination, right? If you have to hire a, min- a, mi- a minority because of the fact of a minority, then you're discriminating against the principle of somebody having the merit to get the job. Discri- so basically discriminate against merit, without merit. Ah, so hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. Without merit, without merit. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up with a very, really big chiddush here. You guys want to hear a massive chiddush? This is a massive one. This is a game changing chiddush. Ready? Where do you find merit in the world? Yes. In the fog. In the fog. And I will, ah, and Shlomo Melech over there. Eric, I will prove to you you're right. I'm going to prove to you you're right. You ready for this? Who was the most humble man that ever lived? Where did Moses basically live? In the revelation of the Shekhinah. What is the revelation of the Shekhinah? Fog. Therefore, was Moses humble? That's it. Why was Moses humble? He lived in the fog. He lived in the fog. Embrace the fog. He embraced the fog. Why do the Christians have the image of heaven as the clouds and the fog? Why? Because that's really what it should be on earth. You should be walking in the clouds, meaning you should be enveloped by fog. Not of just some kind of you know, weird righteousness, but embrace the fog. That's where the merit is. You'll get the merit every single time. It's the wisdom. Meaning, 
if you say if you present to me an impossible question, you know these ethical questions. What you do is you choose from the fog. Then you will choose the merit every single time. As they say in Texas, you can't go wrong. How do you like that? Stay in the fog, choose from the fog, let it discern, but at the same time, that's where the merit is. Now, the, the merit may become revealed. That's called knowing wisdom and instruction. Neo was in fog. By the end of the movie, he came through the fog. Okay, now we have a problem. Now that we understand discriminate, go back in your browser and look at uh, uh, Brian Reed number two. To recognize or identify as separate and distinct, discriminate. Stop. Wow, stop, stop. All right, that's so far so good. Nothing's changed. We're okay, right? Now go ahead. Continue that. Discern right from wrong. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Discriminate. Discriminate. Is discriminate, recognize, identify, separate? We can say that, right? That's safe to say. Safe to say. Now, tell me the definition of discriminate according to this. Discern right from wrong. That's horrible. Yeah. But it's an example. Wow. Wait, that's may, it's very difficult. It might not be wrong, but it might just be extremely difficult. Hold on a second. Discriminate. So what what does discriminate mean again? Discriminate is a, a this or that, right? This or that. Discern. We're saying discern is Hashem will open your eyes. Discern right from wrong. So if I'm supposed to do what's right in this world and not do wrong, God will show you through discerning. And then if I have to discriminate, that's hard. That's really, really hard. Isn't that hard? That's, 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 that's very hard. Very, very hard. Very, 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 very hard. Very hard. Now, discerning right and wrong is is okay, though. Right? Discerning right from wrong, you can you can maybe say. You know, you know, is this is this? I have a new job. I'm looking to uh, further my my career. Is this right for me or not? Right, is this right or wrong? How does this feel? Is this right or wrong? So you want to you want to you want to discern, let the fog go away. But to say it's discriminate, is that? Go back to your browsers uh, on discriminate. Okay. Just read over this page for a second, and think discriminate right from wrong. I don't like this. This is this is. This is bad fog. I call this bad fog. I'm not liking this. To mark or perceive the distinguishing or... It's very harsh, isn't it? Right? You know? It's like, you know, how do you like your chicken, Brian? It's wrong. It's totally wrong. Well, gee, Brian, why is it wrong? It's wrong. Send it back. I mean, it's just kind of... What is what is, yeah, what is right and wrong? What is right and wrong? Yeah, it's right. You, it's what you say. It's what you say. That's the Christian idea. Is that is that a Christian definition? This is right. This is wrong. I think that's where Christianity is stuck in there. What do you think? Hang on that thought, though. Maybe it could be redeemed. Let's see. Um, Brian, go ahead with – where are we at here? I go back to discriminate to discern. Uh, number three, go ahead. I'm not convinced we're done with right and wrong, but so far I got a big deep fog. And I'm, it's very foggy. Go ahead, number three. 
uh, on discern? Yeah. To come to know or recognize mentally, unable to discern his motives. Okay, yeah, it'll come to you, you know, to come to know. To come, ah, the emphasis is to come, to come to know. I told you, ah, that's it. That was that was the conclusion I drew at the beginning of the night, right? That's the whole icker. Icker means principle or foundation. The icker is coming to know, right? So that, that's remember I told you at the beginning of tonight, I told you I was feeling something and I didn't know what it was, Right? And, I, and I, when I, I meditated, that's the missing word. To, co- to come to know wisdom and instruction is to discern the words of understanding. That's it. It's to come to know. It's dynamic. It's pole. It's, pole means dynamic. It's gaining. It's process. It's not static. It wasn't five minutes ago. You did not discern five minutes ago, did you? That is not how you would use that word. Oh, yeah, I discerned it. No, you didn't. You grant dot to man and teach the human being understanding. You grant dot to man and teach the human being. Exactly. That's it. Right. That's it. You're just a guy with dot, but God is the one that's giving you the understanding. All right. So I definitely feel good about the definition. Um, But we're not done, and I think we'll call it there. Um, If someone can make notes on uh, Brian or someone, if you can make notes on a couple things for me, please. Uh, Make notes so we can jump into this next time seamlessly, okay? And please make notes of where we came from, from Lehavin in Hebrew, so we can uh, compare the notes after next week. We're going to do the etymology and put it all back, and it should all fit inside Lehavin. Okay, you with me? So we're again we're compa- we're we're wrapping up this week. What we are all of our conclusions. You should write down the key words, right? Discriminate, discern, recognize. Okay, and and try to remember where we left off with lehavin, right? Some key words, and because because know this word ikker, it's a major word. Words of understanding are called ikker, so discern. To discriminate, recognize, fog. These are not little words. Those are the DNA building blocks of creation. That's what Torah is. Okay? It's coming to know those words. The Torah of Moses is filled with those words. You just don't know them yet. No one does, generally. Your job is to discern through life to learn to know those words, and then you understand the prophecies and wisdom of the Torah. And the last thing I want you to write down is right and wrong. I'm, I'm not convinced we're done because the Aramaic translation of the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the tree of knowledge of, of right and wrong. So I'm not done with it. It just doesn't fit where we are with uh, discrimination and discern. I would call it's foggy. It's lonachon. It's lonachon. It's foggy. I think the um, the uh, etymology will will yield. More for right and wrong, or maybe the word lavin itself. So if you could write down those things, we'll reconvene next week. And uh, I think we did re- succeed in revealing the Shekhinah this week. What do you guys think? All right, I think it happened. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. So uh, welcome everyone who came back for after a long layoff. And see everybody next week. And may we continue from strength to strength.